Hey, yep. As you know, I'm a bit of a mechanical watch enthusiast. It's one of those things that either you get it or you don't get it. But I'm nearly 27 now, and as I've grown older, I've got a bit fed up of disposable, cheap, throwaway consumer technology. As a young lad, I had a couple of sort of wind up mechanical watches. And then, like everyone else, towards the end of the 1970s, I was seduced by the new quartz technology. But once the initial novelty of quartz watches had worn off, they just became tools that performed a task, and then when the battery went, or when they broke, you just replaced them. I mean, they cost virtually nothing. So you lost that feeling of pride of ownership. Then, about eight years ago, I progressed onto a smart watch, which, personally, I found to be just too intrusive. I mean, I don't like my mobile phone that much as it is. It's a necessary evil. But constant buzzing on my wrist telling me that I'd got a text or an email or whatever drove me nuts. And then, if you sort of switch all those notifications off, all you still really have is a rather expensive equivalent of a quartz watch again. So, I didn't see the point. Now, at that point, I didn't even know that anybody still made mechanical watches. I assumed that such things had died a death. And it was actually a chance discovery on Amazon that made me realise that not only were mechanical automatic watches still a thing, they were actually growing in popularity, so I bought one. And then I got another one, and then another one, and before I realised where I was, I'd fallen into that rabbit hole of watch collection. Now, I'm just the same as anybody. If I found a new interest, I become hungry for information. Now, watch channels here on YouTube are far bigger than motorcycle channels. There are more people wearing watches, after all, than there are people that ride motorcycles. And there are literally hundreds of websites and forums devoted to mechanical watches. Now, don't get me wrong, the, most of the people that run these YouTube channels probably know far more about mechanical watches than I do, but every now and again, a question would crop up, which obviously caught my attention because I'm a motorcyclist. And that is the question as to whether riding a motorcycle whilst wearing an automatic or mechanical watch will cause damage to the watch through the vibrations. And each and every time, without exception so far, these watch experts have given the wrong information. They've said, no, you can't wear a mechanical watch on a motorcycle. It will cause damage to it. A lot of websites give out the same information. But the forums are a slightly different matter because, you know, motorcycling is popular and a lot of people that own mechanical watches also ride motorcycles. And from experience the know that it won't cause any damage, as a general rule. Now, there are one or two caveats to this, which I will go into later on, but if you're just looking for a quick, simple answer so you can go on and watch a fluffy kitten video or something, the quick, simple answer is no. Wearing an automatic watch whilst riding a motorcycle will not cause damage to it. If you had a time machine and you took a modern watch like this one back in time to the 1700s and handed it to a clockmaker of the day, yes, he would be shocked by the achievements that have been made, but he would still recognise the basic mechanics of that watch compared to the mechanics of the clocks that he makes. Yes. Even in modern wristwatches, it's ancient technology. And I suppose for some people, it's logical to assume that ancient technology can cope with the rigours of modern life. Especially not riding a motorcycle. Now, I think the major problem that comes into play, especially with a lot of the YouTube channels, and I'm not criticising, is their age. The majority of them probably weren't born until after the 1970s. By then, quartz was king. And none of them that I'm aware of 
are motorcyclists, so they won't be aware of the role that motorcycles played in daily life for the average guy throughout the 1940s, 50s and 60s. And although for the most part they can tell you what the history of the wristwatch is, they don't seem to be able to make a logical connection between past and present. I mean, motorcycles are not a new invention, they've been around for over 100 years. And the wristwatch gained popularity out of necessity during a time of conflict in World War I. Whilst fighting in the trenches, it became of the utmost importance that you had a reasonably accurate timepiece. Warfare was run by the clock. Artillery barrages had to be coordinated so that they wouldn't interfere with multi-point infantry charges. Everything was coordinated on a time schedule. Pocket watches were the order of the day back then, but there were a couple of issues with them, crawling about through the mud and debris of war with a delicate pocket watch in your breast pocket often didn't end well. And the simple act of fishing about in your pocket to retrieve your watch, simply to tell the time, was both time consuming and potentially dangerous. So officers began modifying the watches so that they could wear them on the wrist. That way they could tell at any time at the quickest glance what the time was. This was usually done using very small pocket watches that had been converted, but as time went on, manufacturers started to offer ready-made options. And after World War I, wristwatches rose in popularity. Now at that point, these were still pocket watch technology. Wearing a watch in your pocket doesn't subject it to the same sort of abuse that a watch on your wrist will encounter. So, for the next 15 years or so, watchmakers went through a transition, beefing the mechanisms up, making sure that the products would last, because, let's face it, if they didn't, they would go out of business. Cycling was very popular during that period. To a large extent, it was the number one mode of transport for the average working man. Rough, unmetalled roads and cobbled streets on pedal cycles, which don't forget didn't have any form of suspension in those days, would subject these watches to horrendous forces and abuse. In fact, during that time period, I would say that watches had to put up with far more abuse than any modern watch would have to today on a modern motorcycle. So watch manufacturers had to develop watches that could cope with it. Now, by the 1930s, they were almost there. They'd made enormous advances in beefing up these mechanisms so that they could take more abuse. And for the more well-off gentlemen, motorcycling was also taking off in popularity. Then, in 1934, and forgive me, I forget who it was that was actually responsible for this invention, someone invented the Inca block. Now, this gave wristwatches a new level of shock resistance. The pinion that holds the balance wheel in place was the most failure-prone component of a watch. The pinion, which for want of a better word is basically an axle on which the escapement wheel spins, is so thin that you could thread it through the eye of a needle. A knocks and vibration could easily bend this pinion or even break it, resulting in a non-operational watch. Now, like many spindles in a watch, the set into a synthetic ruby, which both reduces friction and wear so that watches will run for longer. And the Inca block was a brilliant idea. It basically set this jewel into what is effectively a shock absorber. Tension from a brass spring holds the jewel in place so that the watch can function correctly. But knocks, bangs and even vibration allow it to flex so that it doesn't break and after impact the stone and the spindle are allowed to return back to their original place. This was a game changer and basically the birth of the modern mechanical watch. Mm. 
The shockproof watch. Now, this doesn't make a watch bombproof, but it means it can pretty much handle anything a modern day-to-day -day life can throw at it. During World War II, a huge number of watches were manufactured and issued to soldiers on the front. Watch development didn't stand still. These wristwatches had to cope with gunfire, not just from a rifle, but from rapid fire automatic weapons, machine guns. And watches that were constantly failing under these conditions just wasn't an option. There were hundreds of thousands of military motorcycle dispatch riders in operation through World War II. Riding single cylinder motorcycles with at best primitive suspension, at worst no suspension at all, and often they didn't even have the luxury of driving on roads. And this was over 70 years ago. Along came the 50s and the 1960s, the heyday of motorcycle travel for the common man. The common man that wore a wristwatch because he needed to know what time to be at work, what time his break was, what time lunch was. They nearly all wore wristwatches, and for the most part, these were cheap, entry-level watches that were available on a working man's wage. And for the most part, they coped just fine. Fast forward 50 or so years to the present day, and modern automatic watches are far better than the watches that were available to our fathers. Advancements in metallurgy, advancements in watch technology and of course advancements in machining technology mean that the modern automatic watches on sale today are far more robust than they were 50 years ago. And of all the watches that I own, I'm only aware of one manufacturer that does warn you against riding motorcycles. Why that is, I don't know. It is a budget brand. But I've done many hundreds of miles wearing their automatic watches and I've never had a problem. Modern multi-cylinder motorcycles are silky smooth in operation. There is virtually no vibration. The suspension on those bikes takes care of the worst of the bumps. And then on top of that, the human body itself is an amazing shock absorber. So for normal day-to-day -day riding, there is absolutely nothing to worry about wearing an automatic watch on a modern motorcycle. The act of riding a motorcycle will not damage it. Now, at first glance, a large capacity single-cylinder motorcycle is a different kettle of fish. Take, for example, my classic 500, the Mule. At a standstill with the engine running, there is a discernible vibration, granted, but it's still quite gentle. Not enough, in my opinion, to cause any damage to the watch. But at higher revs, and once you actually get the bike moving, that vibration for the most part disappears. There's virtually nothing discernible through the handlebars to be transmitted to your watch on your wrist. Now, the, the Classic 500 is probably the worst bike I can think of for vibration. But as you can see, that vibration is minimal. It's certainly not bad enough to upset a watch. And on the rare occasions where I have heard of watches failing or going wrong, I would surmise that it's possibly a fault with the watch that has just been brought to the attention of the owner by riding a motorcycle, rather than it being the result of riding a motorcycle. 
And I suppose I should mention those caveats, um, you know, whilst we're on the subject of watch failures. Vintage watches are likely to have quite worn mechanisms, and I wouldn't advise riding a motorcycle wearing a vintage watch. Anything over 25 years old. And the other thing that you need to take into consideration is that obviously a watch is very exposed on a motorcycle. Just as if you fell off a ladder onto a concrete floor and smacked your watch on the floor, you would expect it to break. A motorcycle accident is quite likely to cause similar damage, although it might be the least of your worries. So you might want to consider whether wearing, uh, you know, your expensive Rolex watch is a risk you're willing to take when riding a motorcycle. Now, I've ridden thousands of miles wearing mechanical watches, and anecdotally, I have heard of them losing or gaining time a little bit throughout rides, although they've returned back to normal once the ride is over. I can, hand on heart, honestly say I've never encountered this phenomenon myself. Though I admit it is possible. The mechanisms in watches are pretty low torque. So inertia, you know, acceleration, hard braking, banking, could theoretically affect the timekeeping. I mean, I do have watches that perhaps, whilst I'm wearing them, will lose a second a day. But if I take them off and place them face up on a cabinet, they'll gain two seconds a day. That is perfectly normal. So I understand that riding a motorcycle may have a similar effect on timekeeping, but it is only temporary for the duration of the rad. Modern watches are far tougher and more robust than the historical counterparts. Devices that were born during the abuse of World War I and the exceptional demands of World War II. Watches that got Joe Bloggs to work on time. Throughout the 1960s on his Veloset Thruxton or his Royal Enfield 350, for the most part, watches that are available today, even at the entry level, have far better quality and more robust than the watches that were available to our fathers and our grandfathers. They're not delicate flowers that have to be babied. They're designed to be worn, they're designed to be enjoyed. And I personally wouldn't have any concerns about wearing one whilst riding a modern motorcycle. In fact, I would go so far as to say as riding a pedal cycle would probably subject them to more sort of detrimental vibration and shock than riding any motorcycle will. For the most part, riding a motorcycle is no worse than driving a car. Having said that, I would always check your uh, manufacturer's warranty and instructions just to ensure that there aren't any prohibitions on motorcycle riding when you buy a watch. Once again, thank you so much for watching this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I hope that this has perhaps just answered a question for some people that had doubts. I think the majority of motorcyclists know that there isn't a problem wearing a watch on a bike, but there may be some people that are new to either hobby that have the doubts, and this video was intended for them, really. I will, of course, be back on Friday, so until then, please, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.